We know about our murderous machines. We know about the environment they're murdering. We've heard all the apocalyptic prophecies. We know all the terrible statistics. We believe them. There's no more room for argument. The danger is real. But we also know we cannot turn back the clock. We live in an industrial society. We need what it produces. This program is about the real options that are open to us, the real choices before us. visible and audible symbol of the age of technology. Around every city airport, the struggle between progress and quality of life is joined. Here in Florida, that struggle threatened this wilderness. The Everglades, a swamp larger than the state of Rhode Island, inhabited by no people. The Miami Port Authority wanted to build the world's largest airport on the edge of this swamp. Conservationists said the airport would destroy the Everglades. They were able to keep it from being built. They were able to preserve, for a moment at least, this wilderness. For one moment, the progress we've believed in and lived by stopped. The birds won over the jets. But if it was a victory, it was only a symbolic one, and perhaps only temporary. Nothing was finally solved. For while the environment of the Everglades is being preserved, the environment of many people in Miami is being destroyed. Now, as a result of the heated controversy, the federal government invoked a 5,000-foot minimum altitude criteria over the entire Everglades National Park region. The people don't live there. There are no people. It was evidently important to keep airplanes 5,000 feet from the ground uh, over this vast wasteland. But yet the same agencies uh, are perfectly willing for commercial airliner to fly over any city of this nation at 1,000 feet, but over the Everglades now, 5,000 feet. The Miami airport is the seventh busiest in the country. It's dangerously overcrowded. That overcrowding is going to get worse. Miami is one of the most rapidly growing urban areas in the country. We have doubled our population in the greater Miami area every 10 years. The transportation projections for our aeronautical future indicate that in the year 1985, this community will be called upon to handle 65 million airplane passengers annually.
Everybody argues about the need for a new airport. But nobody wants to live near this. People want the convenience of air travel, the prosperity it creates, but not the damage it does to the quality of their lives. No one wants an airport near where he lives. Everyone wants an airport he can get to quickly when he has to go someplace. This is a wonderful neighborhood here, clean. The people are all very nice, and they all keep their properties, as you can see, in order. Their grass is cut, and everything kept nice and clean around here, and the neighbors are wonderful. Couldn't be a better neighborhood, but it's that noise up there. And should that noise and that dirt that comes from these aeroplanes, that soot on my patio, I gotta clean that every day. It took two years to find a site for the new airport. 71 sites were considered. This was the site they chose, 50 miles west of Miami, eight miles north of the big Cypress Swamp, one of the last untouched wilderness areas. Here in depressed, lightly populated Collier County, they were going to build the largest airport in the world. airport is only the latest threat by man. It was to expand around this training runway already in operation. It would occupy 40 square miles across the path of the waterways already damaged by the flood control system. It would, conservationists said, endanger the water supply of all South Florida. Airline and Port Authority officials promised it pollution restrictions, but the airport creates 70,000 new jobs. In time, a community of a million people would grow up around it. There would be industry, prosperity, progress, control the kind of pollution that would bring. Detergents, pesticides, sewage, industrial waste pouring into the water. The sound of jet engines ripping through millions of years of silence. Exhaust fallout polluting the air. Jet oil spills polluting the water. This battle for the moment is over. There will be no airport on the edge of the Everglades. But the problem is bigger than an airport and a swamp. Nothing is finished. Nothing is really solved. There is still no new airport. One has to be built. It will interfere with the environment wherever it's built. Florida is growing. It needs room for industry, for housing, for recreation. The demands of technology are as greedy as ever. No one seems to want to give up the affluence technology creates. No one has yet worked out how to keep producing more babies, more goods and services, and still protect the environment. But here in the Everglades, time has been gained and at least a symbolic victory. Here we chose beauty over progress. We decided there is a quality of life beyond affluence. In the next part of this program, we may see more clearly why such a victory is not to be underestimated.